Welcome back to the Home Goal FC Podcast! Big cheer! Now, the podcast this week is brought to you by our official legal partner and our good friends, Jones White, and we are joined by the lovely Claudia. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Thanks for having me. How are you? Uh, I'm brilliant. How are you boys? All right? Good, Selena. Good. Not bad. <laughs> now, Claudia, what is your role here at Jones White? So I'm a dispute resolution solicitor at Jones White. Right. Um, I don't know if you know much no, about no, dispute. You know that, do you? I know a wee bit about dispute resolution. But you take it away, haven't you? Yeah, of course. So basically our team is here to help bring disputes to a satisfactory conclusion for our clients. Um, so this can be between a landlord and a tenant. So right now we've got quite a lot with the eviction problems and the rent, sorry, uh, she's paying your rent. Um, it can be between you and a tradesman. So if you've instructed works at your property or you want your roof done, and it's not completed properly or there's any delays, we can get involved to help that. Um, sort of defamation matters, so if somebody's made defamatory comments about you or any slander, we can obviously get involved to to make that stop. See on that, so over, I've been with Open Goal for five years, mm-hmm. slagged off constantly <laughs> for five years. Have I got a case? Have um, I got a case against these two? Definitely, we can definitely I'll, help I'll, I'll give you a shout after this. Yeah, we'll have a chat. <laughs> um, yeah, so also we do sort of neighbour boundary disputes, so if you've got any issues with, your title deeds or any sort of ongoing issues with your neighbours or sort of we have issues with garden fences and everything like that, we can get, get involved with that. Um, basically anything from issuing a letter all the way through to defending or pursuing a court action, that's where we're basically there to help. Claudia, it would be absolutely brilliant, but we're not finished yet. Boys, have you said any <laughs> issues with your neighbours or any issues that you would like to ask Claudia? Just so. I've just obviously, when she brought up their uh, issues with like neighbour disputes and stuff like that, I've got an ongoing thing that I probably would like to try and resolve one way or another because yeah, the other means of trying to resolve it isn't working. So. Mm-hmm. Maybe need to speak to you after this. So Claudia, see if anybody is struggling at, at home, what should they do, how to deal with this and get in touch with you? So basically, if you go to joneswhite.co.uk, uh, one of our expert dispute members will be in touch with you or you can click the link below and we'll be in touch as well. Amazing. Claudia, you've been absolutely amazing. Well, Super well done, you. Claudia. Thanks for having me. Great debut. So guys, substitution, big substitution. Is. The main man. The manager. The manager, the gaffer. Simon, in you come. Go on, Simon. Come on, Simon. Come on, Simon. I don't right, just back to Liverpool, no needs to be podcast. <laughs> what I've come to. <laughs> don't need to be present, you're like you're wasting away. No, so. no. <laughs> You'll have them tanned, won't you? Oh, You'll have them battered by the end of this. Oh, done. pleasure to be on that. Thanks for having us If you hadn't feel to, to know what with me, See, when you hit the height, sometimes you need to be lows just to remind, remind you how good the good times are. <laughs> how was it the weekend? Oh, brilliant, mate. What a weekend, bro. Just needed it, mate. No, I fucked it five times. Massimo Denati had a fucking eye patch on his right eye, mate. Did you not put in the Rangers, man? I don't think you need to be retired, do you know? I think you do, mate. You're not retired, though. Heard, um, heard of the who was meant to be brilliant. How did you not play? I, I, He's I, a, I, well, that's a big question. Yeah, seriously, what do you think? Oh, f- big names. I'm going to be a cowboy. Like, look like a cowboy. What did you say you were going to wear underneath it? Check shot. Where's your fish? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to have, see, I should have worn the boots, I shouldn't have. I had a suit with my, uh, what, the Doc Martens? See, like the boys Yellowstone. Doc Martens, I think that would have been a good uh, deal. That would have been a good look. Uh, I'll date that for the next show, would yep, you? Yep, no. It's mad, isn't it, how he just kind of pull off any look. I know. You think usually like one look, like you? No, in fact, no. I'm no fashionable. <laughs> hey, look look at the zip, job back. Zip's zip zip noise. Zip 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 what's going on here? Come on, your old job back. Look, no bad, aren't they? Oh, you're nice, but uh, sun yeah, I'm going to wear these. Keep talking. I'm going sun to wear these. I think that's a good stroke. Why, Kim? It's like, what can you do? You're motioning that. Help me, man. Question regarding the why did Slade not get down to Liverpool? Well, apparently, Celtic contacted Open Goal or needing one of the Celtic legends, and they got the names mixed up. Oh, he ended up going down. So, is that what happened, Slade? I, hey. well, I, I think so. I think every Celtic fans in the street have, have, have spoke to me and right. said you should have been going ahead of him. So. Memories that last a lifetime. You can like, mate. How was your performance though? Safe. 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 Mate, nobody else wanted to keep the ball, brothers, eh? No. Like a basketball game. <laughs> yeah. What film? I just want. What film? Crack kid. Mr. Miyagi. Toy Story. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> anyway. Who does he look like in Toy Story? <laughs> Uh, Must be somebody Sid. he looks like. You look Sid. <laughs> you look up my Sid. The neighbour. <laughs> the horrible wee guy. <laughs> so it does. You guys are cutting toys up. <laughs> That's an amazing you look, you look the guy. Oh my God. I don't say buzz yeah, right here. No, 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 no. It's the exact same haircut. Don't even say it. Keep an off. Don't even say it. Yeah. He looks like... He looks at the guy in the second oh, man. Oh, Sid, isn't it? See the No, he looks... How do you look? the big guy eating the watch it? No, he looks at the guy that steals buzz. The comic guy. <laughs> oh, oh boy, say you don't laugh, you'll greet. Oh. Correct. And it has been listen, I, I, oh, it's been a week for my mum is nearly greeting. And I'll be like, I, I, I usually I mean I get battered this every week. Just I mean, I think one of the faces and one of the people that you if you're frustrated you take out at me, didn't you? And I like yeah, I've always I like that. It shows. Yeah. 
<laughs> but gen- genuinely, last week I did struggle. I phoned you. You were actually you were you were you were good, mate. Well, you? you you dealt with it fine, but I I really struggled. I, I had a low, but there was a wee thing. But I, there's a few things going on personally as well with me, so it probably didn't help. But um, listen, see 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 like see see this these decisions and stuff that's happened last week, and obviously Sai announcing that he's moving on, and the, the coach and staff and everyone's moving on. Sometimes that just happens in life. It's just simple. It's sometimes things don't sometimes don't happen the way you hope they'd happen. But you get, I would, I could honestly sit here and say, and not um, just be knowing you's like he's put everything into it. Some days you've come out of the podcast on a Monday or a Tuesday and he's be down for a few days and a bit flat and like what's wrong? You'd phone text after the game say I can't wasn't sleeping last night and like it kind of took over your life a bit. Mm. So, in in, in in aspects of people criticising the situation. Listen to the, today and understand what's actually going on and how it's actually affecting you personally and your personal life, you as a, as a human being, first and foremost. And this, this is why we are here to chat about it. Mm-hmm. How, how, how do you feel now that the news is out? Do you feel a bit more relieved or? Uh, no, listen, I can take abuse, mate. I'm just a big boy, can. do you know what I mean? But it's when people are saying things that aren't true that you yeah. start. To, it's not me again, it's my family that yeah. kind of take it hard. But so I wanted to come on dispel a few myths that have been kind of mm-hmm. going about this week so for one I'm no I never left Broomhill because I had an offer of another job once I decided to leave Broomhill be totally honest we have had a chairman a director of football phone us no offer as a job but to sit and speak about a possibility of a job yep. which I've not back because I don't want to be a manager next year mm-hmm. and that's part of the reason why I'm leaving Broomhill I don't think it's possible for me to be a manager and then come on this type of like you say come on this type of podcast on a Monday where you need to be upbeat you know, this is my priority in life. This is what we've built up for nothing. This is what kind of pays the bills, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So you need to be on top form for this straight away. And I didn't feel like that's capable when you're a manager. I don't think it's right when you've been beat 3-0 on a Saturday, you're coming on here laughing and joking. Now, if you're a coach or a player, I think it's all right. But if you're the main guy in charge, and like I say, you've been beat on a Saturday, you're coming on here laughing and joking, I don't think it's all right. I didn't feel comfortable doing it. Yep. I don't want to do it again for another season. So in terms of management, I'll not be doing that again next year. You just know how much I love coaching couple of possibilities to maybe go and coach somewhere which I want to take up if that if that coaching job only consists of me turning up putting on a session and going up the road mm-hmm. because like I say I, it's too consuming for me to be a manager and also do this podcast um, again with the management time the amount of time it took up in my life was incredible mate uh, for anybody saying that this is like a vanity project mate, I, I don't think I've ever worked as hard in my life at any job that I've ever had um, and that started to affect my family, started to affect the staff, mm-hmm. the amount of times we fell out, the players. Um, I wanted to run this club like a League One club. Okay, if I came for what I think is one of the best run part time clubs in Scotland in Peterhead, I wanted this to be run the same. That's why I, I was able to get guys like him yep. on the promise that that's what it would be. But the reality is, Kev at Broomhill have been going for what, 10 years now, and we've got two guys that work there. Again, that's no slagging the two guys because they've got jobs as well. Yep. I've no doubt they've worked hard. Uh, but between the three of us, we're kind of trying to run a full football club mm-hmm. together. But also, not just a normal football club, a football club with open goal attached to it as well. And the amount of work that came with that was a lot more than what I thought it would be. Yeah, I think. And I just, I just didn't feel like I could be successful working under these circumstances, Kev. That's not to say that under these circumstances you can't be successful because I think Broomhill were, I think the guy Swifty got them fourth in the league one year, so it's possible. But for me, and how mm. I want to work, yep. I don't feel like I can be successful under these circumstances. People probably watch this and go, well, why didn't you put me on money in it? I think people think that Open Goal sit with a big pot of cash, which no. we didn't. Mate. The way that we've worked this is that any money that we've spent is money that we generate for sponsors such as Bucks Bar, Jones White, M&D Green, and then also the gate money. Yep. But one thing you can't guarantee, and what we thought would get a lot more, was the gate money. Yep. But due to circumstances out with our control uh, in terms of the weather, there was times where it was freezing we didn't get the, the crowds that we thought yep. we'd get Saturday then games. also the Saturday games I mean leagues no being accommodating as we thought it would be teams no being accommodating as we thought it would be and we've ended up having to play a lot more um, Saturday games than we thought because with, with the Friday night games I think you've seen the crowd was there if we were to get Friday night games there maybe could have been resources there to go and get more staff and more bodies in to help us to get to where, to get to where we want to be but ultimately we can't guarantee that and we didn't want to be a company that goes in or a team that goes and spends out with our means um, you look at Spartans and that, Kevin. and I've said this before, I went and spoke to their manager and you look at their setup compared to ours, I just find it com- I just find it hard for us to compete with them at that level. Broomhill's only been going for 10 years, they don't have a yeah. huge fan base, so when you're putting it, it sounds like maybe, maybe try to, to, to put excuses in here, but it's far from it because ultimately with the league no accommodating, and they don't, they don't have a right to accommodate anybody, but 
I think it would enhance the league yeah, if teams were playing yeah, on a Friday night crazy, and getting the nights when we played um, Alaba 1500 people um, at Broadwood and stuff that, that's only benefiting the league so I think sometimes when the likes of this project if it ever was to come along again for say somebody else somewhere along the line I think they've got to be a wee bit more accommodating um, Peter, I think it really annoying me I think a couple of people say it's a vanity project Nice. I mean, I've left a I left a league one job on better money and lo a lot less work to come and do this. He's left a championship team with one game away for the Premier League for less money to come here, and it wasn't through. Uh, how is that vanity? We've Listen. came here because we speak on the podcast about how we're going to play the style of play we want, how we want to help young players come through in Scotland. That's what we speak about on this podcast. That's what we wanted to do. I could have left this job. I was going to leave the job two or three times during the season. The, reason, the one reason I never stayed, please believe me, is to make myself look good because if anything I've looked worse than it, yep. the one reason that I've stayed is for the players, mate. Yeah. That's the reason why we've stayed, we've seen it. He's been frustrated. How many times have you been frustrated this year, brothers, with, with situations and you've stuck it? It's just a good opportunity of the day to get things off, brother. What, what, what have you thought of it all, obviously? Because you've come in on the promise of Simon's um, conversation and then now, obviously, it's looking in. But I'm, I'm pretty sure I've not seen you with a smile on your face the times you've been involved in everything that we've done. Um, don't get me wrong, at first it was, as Sai said, it was hard. Um, I was getting frustrated and that, but once, once you get your head round it, like, I came here, I'm, I'm not going to lie, I came here, as, it was a project, I was here for the long term. Um, bit gutted, uh, as Sai said, I left a, a good club at a good level. But it wasn't even about the money, it was more about working with Sai and how he worked and that. Um, I enjoyed it. Um, yep. The training was intense, it, it wasn't as if it was... Uh, a mess about do you know what no I mean it, we were there we were at it every day and if anything I think these boys would have learned from how you go about your business every training session rather than you come in you go to another part time team you, you mess about yeah. and all that we were at it every training session so for that I hope these boys take it on to if they stay or they, they go to their next club but in terms of a personal point of view yeah we bit gutted um, came here I was hoping we could have went through the leagues as everybody did but as you said earlier, that, that's life. Mm -hmm. Sometimes shit happens. It just doesn't work out. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't work out. And as size come on here and he's explained and explaining that, it's, it's not possible to go another year. So what do you do? You sit and you cry about it and take all this negativity that which was, was always going to come its way and take it all to heart and say, oh, I'm not going to go again. I'm not going to go and get another job and hide away from it. No. We're big enough and bad enough that we'll go again and we'll take mere criticism. Mm -hmm. But at least we are willing to put ourselves out there yep. and make their mistakes. That's important. Do you know what I mean? That's there are many people sit at home and are not willing to do anything in, yep. in case they take criticism. Come on, is that what life's about? We, we go again. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I've seen a thing that, that's, I mean, uh, it's crazy that it's almost like Broomhill's going to fold as a club yep. now that we are pulling it. That's, that's so far for the truth. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's still there's still been a good. Uh, I mean, where they were last season when they've been this we, us coming, it's no making any. It's no making them in a worse position, is it? Well, can I say something? I've seen that as well. Clubs, the club will be left worse off. Players will be so if players have sold the dream. So I want to address the two things. So first of all, with the clubs being, it'll be worse off. There'll be no debt left at the club when we leave. Mm -hmm. No outstanding debt. There was debt when we went there. Yeah. We've cleared that debt. So the club's actually in a better yeah, position than it is when, now, once we've left yeah, and then, yeah. we, then we first got it. In terms of the players, a, bit, a player's been sold a dream. For anyone that knows how part-time level works, mate, it's always one-year contracts. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of selling people a dream, every player I went and met was told, I think I said this to you, brothers, if we're up near the top of the league, we'll go again next year. Is that my, what huh? my worst day? If no, it's in, it'll be in doubt. Like any in life, mate, if it's no yeah, successful, yeah. there's a the doubt there whether it'll go that. again because there might not be the interest in it, you might not generate the sponsorship for it. But in terms of sell, telling players exactly how we were going to play, exactly how we are going to train, exactly how I was going to prepare for things, exactly the intensity, I don't think one player can come in here and say yeah, it, I, I, 100%. there's no match that. 100%. So in terms of selling players a dream, that has not happened. Every single player was told exactly how it was going to be. And I, I, I believe that I've stuck to everything that I said I was going to do in terms of professional, professionalism, sorry, in terms of preparation for every training session, for every game. Um, but you look at any part-time club in this summer, whether it's fucking Kelly Hearts, whether it's Dumbarton, there'll be 10 players that leaving that, that yep, summer. Yeah, 100%. And, and, that, and that's just the way part-time no, football it's works. It's just no document and people don't see it, but because, because it's are, open goal. Because it's open goal and we are talking about it every week, it's it's a big deal, but... Again, Kev, I think people think that we own Broomhill, we've done it. No. It was a year-to-year -year deal. Um, Broomhill still owned by the same people. Um, so when we leave, 
nothing, nothing uh, will change in terms of ownership of the club. It will still be the same guys that were were there before we came in. So it was just like a sponsorship then? Just like a sponsorship, uh, mate. So a yeah. year's year to year. We reviewed, it, reviewed it end of each year to see moving forward. Or bit, bit. And again, it was both sides. I think Graham Hill thought it was best for them to go back to the way they were as well. Um, so again, it's it's amical in terms of the... I think, the um, I think on that part of the ownership and the, the sponsorship thing for a, for a year, i say if you'd approach maybe, say, two or three of the lowland league teams at the bottom of that league and offer them that opportunity. I think a, a two or three of them would have, would have found it difficult not to join partnership because they would have seen the opportunity potentially. In terms of like, obviously, Broomhill, I think there's a couple of misconceptions as well about we took them away from the home. Well, I'm, I, I don't know too much, but the history I was reading, it showed that Broomhill last year were playing at Alloa. They are further away from home. So that's further away from where they're originally from. So bring them back to, bring them to Clyde, makes them closer. And they don't actually have a ground. They didn't have a fan base. No, I think that was if I think that was a thing. Um, I mean, it was a few months in, and you, and you started the because when you first went in, you you you're, you're all excited building a new team, but then it was almost like we had, it's almost like you need to build a full new club. But and it's no disrespect to Broomhill, but there was as, as we've said earlier on, there was no sort of fan base, there was no stadium, there was no training facility, there was no committee, there was none of that there. So he, I mean, a lot of the time he sort of got into training. In the next day, try to get a training pitch sorted, try to get the, the stadium booked out, sorted, whatever it is. Um, he's dealing with that. Um, and then he's there and try to go into training. Now, that wouldn't be at another club. They've read like Spartans have got their training facilities there. So it was almost two, two jobs put into the one rebuilding the club and rebuilding the team, uh, bringing all the players in. I don't get where they're coming for you've sold players a dream. Because it doesn't matter if you gave that player a five year deal. See if he doesn't perform on the pitch, he gets moved out. So, if anything, you've helped the players because you've gave them a bigger exposure where more people's probably seen them. And if they've performed and somebody's been there watching them, they'll get another team. Or they'll stay there up, or they'll move on. Higher up in the low. Exactly. I don't doubt for a second at some points yeah. in the season, especially I would say after that kind of 8, 9, 10 game on beaten run, they went when we were sitting three, four points off the top with a game in hand. And the performances are young Matty McDonald and Aidan McLaughlin, Jimmy Grant, the Simples. I was thinking, People must be watching them thinking they could play at a higher level. So in terms of exposure and even the exposure has been amazing for their guys. But I think your experience as a footballer and then being a first team coach with Peter Head in league football and then taking that to the guys because, yeah, they might have had some coaches before that maybe haven't been at a level or maybe haven't experienced playing league football. I think even that alone is invaluable sometimes. And it's like, like Broder said, showing them how to operate and how to conduct yourself when you're in at a professional club from day to day. Don't just turn up and think, oh, I've been working today. It's going to be a tough gig tonight. Be professional about it because everybody's watching every move you make. Somebody will come to you and say, Simon, what about the boy so-and-so? What do you think? Kev, I'm going to tell you this now. See your players this year. They'll have more options this year than they had last year. Yeah. Bar him and Brock, I don't think any other boys had any other options when I went to meet them. To mm -hmm. went to meet them, sorry. So... If you look, we'll go through the full team. David Wilson was in and out of Stenhouse Muir team. Jim Grant didn't play at all for Still and Albion. Broad has played every game for Inverness. Cookie never played a game for Peterhead, a single game. Pat never played a single game for Broomhill. Left back, uh, Kyle Semple didn't have a team for two years. Who else has played there? Con. Conroy was in and out of the Peterhead team. Move on to midfield. Matty McDonald never played for Airdrie. Aidan McLaughlin never played for Broomhill. Gaz. Jamie Semple's in and out of East Fife. Gaz never played a game for Peterhead. Alex never played a game for Annan. Ryan Tierney in and out at Broomhill, maybe 10 appearances. Yep. Evan, Evan uh, injured for quite a bit of the season in and out at Broomhill. So when I went to meet these guys in the summers, they never had loads of offers. No. That's why they ended up coming to Broomhill. Because yep. believe me, it wasn't for, for the money. No. Now, as you say, with the exposure we've gave them, I've got loads of managers asking me about a lot of the exactly. players. Mm -hmm. So to say that the players have been hung out to dry is a load of nonsense. And the other thing is, is... Um Whatever Broomhill do moving forward in terms oh, of... Sorry, it's even on that, Kev. Oh. And the reason why I think that they've, they've, they've shown up so well is because we've stuck to beliefs, our beliefs, Aye. how we told them we were going to play because we oh, felt it suited them. Nice. It could have been easy for us to lose five games and say, do you know what, brothers, Stenny, we're going to kick the ball to the pitch and then try and win the game. But uh, we wouldn't have got the best out of the players. We brought the players in because we're going to play this way it suits you and we're going to stick to it. And we've done that. 
I know even when we, I don't know, I think we've won one game since January, but we have not deviated away from. No, no, you look at the young boy. I mean, the dev has been outstanding, and, that, that, and the thing is, it, there was a few games early on where he did two top league one. Sorry, mate, two no, top league one teams I, get in touch with the goalie. I, I, I and and he early on made a few uh, mistakes, and it would have been easy to go. Do you know what? Maybe we'll take him out and play a keeper that's maybe going to play it long and sort of take the risk away from now. He kept staying in it, and he's just got stronger and stronger. Um, so now you're right. As much as I've no one for a wee while. We've not been run over the top. No, no, no. Do you know what I mean? No, we're like Rangers. Aye, uh, the, the B teams, I yeah. should say. But the, the, on, on, on like Broomhill, Broomhill obviously are still going to be Broomhill. They're still going to be playing the lone league. They have now got an opportunity to approach some of these guys and say, right, we're going to be here next year. Uh-huh. We're going, we'll, we'll, we'll keep you. Uh-huh. It's not as if these players are now, because Simon Ferry's left and open goals pulled out, that these boys have to pull out as well. But also are boys that are, are more than... Uh, sustainable in aye. terms of what Broomhill could pay. And, and aye, so it's not like we know the, the way it's not like people it's, loads of money aye, that Broomhill it's would it's never be able to afford again. We need to, we can't afford to give him what we gave him because that's what you could that's all you could give them anyway. Yeah. So there's still that option that it's not as if so for me, I think if Broomhill are quick to act and get somebody in ready, somebody come in, it's got to be my manager at the end of the season, come in, speak to all the boys and say and I again, Kev, we've, said, we've said that we'll help Broomhill with that. Aye. Any recommendation, you need to speak to any managers, any players, we're more than if happy I'm, if, I'm, if I'm running, the, if I'm the director of football at Broomhill, whatever, I'm getting somebody in place. If I'm getting in the now, I'm getting my manager sorted out quite quickly because there's plenty of guys available that could do a job. And what I'm saying is I'm getting to speak to all the players that are already there and say, right, who wants to stay next year and we'll go again? Because I tell you what, oh, I said this to you from, a, from a, 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 a point of view of watching most of the games this season that there's a huge potential and I always thought the first season would be difficult if there was an option of a second season I think it, it would be a lot different and you would know that you would agree with me in that in terms yeah. of you would change a couple of things but you need help yeah. and that help's probably not going to be there hence yeah. why this is one of the reasons so for me I'm looking at it thinking it's a great opportunity for somebody and, and going further down in terms of the under 20s with Robbie and Andy I mean, they're playing some unbelievable football yeah, and they've got some some unbelievable that they've had before either. A oh, successful some, under 20s team. Some guys unbelievable who are kids. Probably ready to go and play in the first team on their money as well. You could put that under 20s 100%. team in there and add a few experienced players. Yep. And even that would still be a strong Broomhill side compared to what they've had in the past. Can yeah. I ask you how you've used, how you've used enjoyed it? On the pitch, has been great. On the pitch, everyone was right. Mm-hmm. I don't care what MD says, but apart from that, I've enjoyed it. As Aye. I said to the boys, I enjoyed working with them. It's, at the beginning, I, I get frustrated. Yeah, um, it was hard for me, but get my head over Slaney Slot on me at first. <laughs> <and> that, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but no, it's yeah, I shit myself. <laughs> and then, that. then your, your fight as well. That was incredible. Do you know? And, and, and I'm not just saying this. <laughs> I, I don't think the people know about no, this. I don't think you do. No, that, that I've said to you that was that's probably one of the the, the worst moments. I, I said to you like, I don't mind people ever arguing and training that, but w- w- I mean, what had happened was you said about I was taking one of the boxes and the, the ball was out or in or whatever and you said something and then whatever fucking reason I've just he's just went and volleyed the ball at you and then I've just seen no, you I've coming never seen his face I've just like seen that. you come towards me and I can go, I remember that like, saying to myself please boys get in fucking front of him please God <laughs> because he is going to let her fuck at me and then the worst part was I think guys and, and Brock, Brock and Simpson maybe were getting an arm each and I just seen you like, f- throw name after oh no somebody else got one of no, is it me? Yeah, you're wrong. Do, 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 do you know the worst part? So, see, I think you've swung a name. You never could go, hey, you never punched us or anything, but you, you've, I think you caught, oh, yeah, yeah. caught me a name or whatever. So, well, it was my, I think it was a, a spot. It's, uh, he clocked a spot. No, wait, this is, a, this is brilliant, right? So, one of the spots is it, bleeding, right? So, you say he brings us all in. So, I say you bring us peak to This is coming down. So, Gaz gives me a bib to wipe it. But, see, when he gives me, I put the bib on, I must be in somebody's team for the next session. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it was, I think you were on. You were no. You were on the side of the pit. You were on a. You were a bounce player on the side, and you were standing. And Brock came up to me. Gaffer, I had to tell Slaney to go up the road. Eh? I think Brock is. Brock, uh, brothers is going to punch fuck at him so, after. Because I remember so he walked up for the bus with his Puma Kings on. I sat at the bus. I missed the bus, and uh, 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 at that one, I mean, whoever that company is, make sure you get a fucking bus. It comes out of fifteen minutes instead of an hour and a half. I'm sitting for an hour and a half with this guy, and uh, sit me the, the, the and I didn't get him about midnight. But I remember the next day. I phoned Sai the next day and said, "Listen, Sai." I need to go because that's a complete lack of respect. Again, I don't not mind people arguing and training and having a wee bit, but when you're launching a ball, anybody that for that matter, doesn't matter, you cannot do it. And I said to say, um, I need to go. I need like I I I'm now, I need to leave now, to, and that has to be that marker. And then, but we, we resolved it, and then we spoke to the boys on the Thursday, didn't we? we? Spoke, and I said, listen, boy, I'm lucky to still be here because that that was the thing. It wasn't it, it wasn't it because I'm size mate. I didn't like that. It was. 
that can, that can never happen again. Um, so that's something I, I, I definitely regret. Um, Tell you what, it's been a pleasure watching him playing it for the back. Oh, I've been outstanding. <laughs> because you know what, do you know what, brothers? And, 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 and people maybe, and I, I don't know how, but people maybe didn't think you were as good as that player. But I'm going to tell you something again why you should never listen to people on Twitter. I remember when we announced your signing, I had like messages saying, I oh, you to kid on, you want to play it for the back and you sign Kurt Broadfoot who kicks up the pitch. I was like, mate, just shows that you know nothing about football, mate. Had it my whole career, mate. Uh -huh. as, as I it's said, in one ear, out the other. But you've shown it this year, mate. If you start believing you what don't people write away, about do you, you, mate, every criticism. Had it my whole, whole career, mate. Way. Whole career. If, if I start listening to people that sit in the house and can he kick a ball, then be hiding under your bed. Uh -huh. The thing is, I think anybody that has come a, come along to Broadwood and, or even the away games and watched some of the performers this year, they'll they'll find very few that they would like been dominated. Aye, they, uh -huh. they would find very few performances where they'll actually say, oh, Brimhill were unlucky the other day, or they, they wouldn't say that, well, oh, they're not a good side, mm. or they're not well organised, or they're not set up right. Because I think, every, I've always said this, and I, I keep saying it, in that league, I think it's a very, very close league, even though the positions in the league don't always reflect how competitive it is, because we went on a really bad run since January, and it's put us right down the league, but up until that point... I think I said to you, Chris, if you win the next 10 games, where do you think you could be? And you said, you'll we'll be far away. And yeah. didn't quite work out. But it's just who's went on a good run at that right time, but beat Spartans at home the first game, drew them away. They're sitting top of the league, looking for tension, missed minute. a penalty last minute. And even the two East Cabrai games, drew, uh, lost at home and lost, uh, drew away. Mm -hmm. Probably could have won both of those games. Trenent um, at home. No, I need to say Trenent away. No, we got battered. Uh, Trenent got battered away battered, from yeah. home, but at home. Him and Nice at home, there. possibly a couple of mistakes from the goalkeeper that could have a different yeah, result. Yeah. So it's all I have supports and I think, but my, but my my whole point is is that Broomhill were competitive, oh, more than competitive. Yeah. It was just for whatever reason we lost consistency or we lost players or we lost key suspenses. players at key times. Aye. So when you think about that ten game run, the next game Div, who's so important to how we play in terms of. Yeah. Playing out, but he's also games, right? he's, he's still, still in here, aye. summing up his yep. head. And then we go away to an end with him and Cookie, and then Semps missed a couple of games. That's right. We changed our full formation to get the best out of Semps in at 10. Um, so he, I think he was at East Stirling at home and we'd beat Civil and we'd beat Cowden Beath. Maybe a start a wee run again, and then Semps misses the East Stirling game at home and we end up getting beat 1 0. So yep. key players at key times have, have killed us a wee bit. I know, see, I know you see that there, the, 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 like the bad run, and, and, and I get that with the league position, but honestly, see, see majority of the games, you're, sometimes you're walking, you're, you're, you're going home and you're like, yourself, how have we not won that? Berwick, game? mate, Berwick, Carl, weeks ago. Honestly, in the fact never seen a, a low on league team play on a pitch like that, mate, you were incredible. Uh -huh. And even, even I know they'll beat him and they're doing the bottom, but that pitch was like a fucking mudstay, <laughs> a pigsty, a mudstay, a pigsty, you were outstanding. And that, that that was the thing that excites you. I, if it was to go next season, you're thinking like maybe we can bring in a few here, and maybe in the staff change that a wee bit, change a few of the players. Do you know what I mean? The certain oh, areas I you feel like get a wee bit stronger there. But unfortunately, that's uh, not the case. But I, listen, I'm, I must say, I've I've loved it. I, I, I've absolutely yeah. loved it, mate. For me, because uh, it's weird, mate. See, see, before I came on open goal, maybe four or five years ago, my name was Muck. I was. Uh, I'd say it was still quite mucky. Mate. Quite, it's quite mucky, but probably. I mean, I've said this all day. It's quite. Um, a, 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 like I was seen as a bit of a rocket. Still are, but a, do you know that way? And probably a, a decent rocket. Do you know what I mean? Rocket, a, no. a, a, a better rocket than probably what I was before. And you know, and, and, <laughs> this was strange, though, because when I came out of it, but this is what killed me because it's certain, obviously, the Amsterdam thing, but. People did not would not touch me in football when they take me into football. Even your mates in football, if they were doing coaching gigs or, or or whatever it was, they still wouldn't. Even if they needed somebody in, they Maybe still wouldn't take put you me in. Even if I was close, so for society to bring me in, uh, it was amazing. And again, I keep saying I wish I had clocked home quite early. To Even your development as a coach just came on massively. I know. At the start, you didn't know what to do. You were nervous, confident. Now aye. you're taking sessions, you're watching videos, you're sending me stuff like, in terms of opinions. You don't agree with it most of the time. I agree with one of them, but <laughs> you're doing it. I think the whole, the whole journey for everybody, whether it be from the manager to the assistant to the players to me that was sitting doing a wee bit of comedy and stuff like that, and then doing the podcast, it's been a learning experience because I never knew how football clubs were run, how the day, like, it's all right being a player, Aye. you let everybody else take care of that side of things, but when you're kind of in the background and you see what's happening, you hear of a story of something or that, this, I've had a player in and they couldn't get registered in time and things like that, you're like, you're thinking, oh my God, man, imagine being the manager of this place, it's, it's like, it's frustrating, so mm -hmm. it's been good for us in different ways in terms of understanding maybe 
what could you do better next time? How could we improve things better next Both, time right. if it was ever to happen? But in general, to Mate, me, that's I what was, I will say, Kev. Like, have you ever? Think, I know you're thinking about management. I know, do I know. not realise how how, how hard seven. it is. But that is Sorry, isn't it? part I, time. I, it's no part time. I, I can't compare anything to anything. But when, like, yeah, I take a, a young group of boys because I enjoy coaching young kids and. It takes me to about like two, three o'clock in the afternoon to actually get all the things that were in my head about the game yeah. out of my head so I can actually concentrate. And I've, I've even Linz, would you stop talking about the kids? Mm. So I can only imagine with you where it's like it's meaningful. My, my kids are meaningful. You see, even that, Kev, so imagine that, that you've been beat, say you've been beat, oh. you know, and you've got their feelings, but then you then need to watch the game back. You uh -huh. then need to analyse, you need to clip it on, and then you need to watch the opposition and that feeling of it just. You, you end up not speaking to anybody. You took it personally oh, in terms of because you cared. I've never seen him like that. Because you cared. Because you cared. I've never seen him like that. And do you know what you get? People were saying, "I uh, oh, because you're losing." Do you know when we went? I think it was the, we went in the ten game win streak, and I think it was after the, it was the ninth game or something like that. I can't remember. And we were coming home, we were all, we were all buzzing, and you were just like. This isn't normal. I should be enjoying that at the side. He was like, I'm almost torturing myself at the side. And that was even when we were winning, wasn't it? But you were like that as well. I remember following you on a Sunday sometimes and you were the same. I, look, just, just maybe that is just... I don't know. It's like... Win, lose or draw, you can't stop thinking about I know, aspects I, of the game. I, 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 I almost tried to not let it get to me, but it does get to you... Um, Almost you got I, better at it, didn't you? Aye, uh, like, even winning, you, you, you almost take the negatives from it. Like, mm. I should have done that better. Aye. Aye, look, we've won the game, just enjoy it, is what, what you're saying. But yeah. we weren't there, we were saying, see if we had done that, we could have won maybe with a couple of more goals where we were getting caught up in the negative instead of looking at the positives. Yep. Yep. Um, but even the league itself, like, you would go three weeks without a game. game uh, rubbish. Like, you, rubbish. You've lost a game, you want to go again, and then you've not got a game for three weeks. Like, and then you've got six games in three weeks. Aye. <laughs> but in that time, when you've not had a game in three weeks, the team you've come up against in three weeks have been I've, playing. Aye. Yeah, you're you're a good run. Okay, no, hell, man, your, your boys are at it. But for me, the boys have just been amazing. That's what I was just about to say. Mate. One thing we do need to say, the boys, because we have asked a lot for them. And there has been, there's been things that we can't really talk about that have happened to them. And I think their attitude's been absolutely incredible. Even like we told them Tuesday, their training on Thursday was incredible, wasn't it? Uh, it was exceptional, amazing. mate. And that's the thing, like there's six games to go and, and, and in those six games regarding the five training, bit, huh? five games, so I thought you said six games in three weeks there, but anyway, so <laughs> five five games in three weeks, nothing's going to change. You're still going to be professional about it, you're still going to approach it, try to win as many games as you can and finish hopefully a bit higher than where we are because that's potentially on the cards. Um but for me, it's been a, it's been a, it's been enjoyable, but it's been eventful. You'd like to think people will come and watch these players now. Ah, yeah, definitely. You no, know, for next year. Listen, and definitely as well, Kev. I, 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 I don't really to speak to a lot of people in football, but any contacts I've made there the last few years in Open Goal, then I would definitely recommend a lot of these boys to them. Mm. And, and not just because you, you go only them as a person. I didn't like you can't you can't be like that because they would they, they would you see right away they're not good enough or no. But that isn't the case. Um, but it's honestly, what what a group of boys! You mm. couldn't have done it. You, you couldn't have got a better group for it. I told the boys that I was leaving, and it, it just coincidence that Peter Head manager got sacked two hours before it. So, told the boys, walked into my office, mate. Honestly, I hadn't even sat in my seat chatting the door. I thought somebody's going to come in and say what the fuck's happening here. Brock's like, right, Gaffer, when are we going to Peter Head? <laughs> when are you taking me to Peter Head? Like, but do you know think though, that tells you <laughs> I think that's incredible guy, man. I was like mate you actually brighten up my day nah, I brought it. and I think that tells you though the way the players have reacted because if, if it was was done wrong and it was he, he, it was a sort of fuck about it. then boys when they did it boys were like right see you later I'm having this but the boys have reacted brilliant and as well so can I just say this that somebody was saying to me or oh, previous staff members at Birmingham and all that Get left for people to come in. That's not that. Was no, the nobody was asked. Not, not one person was told to leave this club. Part for me, obviously the manager, but I mean, I, I, part for you a couple of times. <laughs> so the, was still. the manager, the, the previous manager of Broomhill, was he like, removed? Was his position? Uh, well, was he they sacked were, that? Uh, they're going to get rid of him. Uh, they're going to get rid of him anyway, uh, yeah. because obviously that's another one. Obviously he maybe feels a bit hard done by, but that's football. You like people get sacked, people get moved on, and. But we yeah. never went in and said to any, I mean, no. Lynn, the, the physio, David, the kid, we never went in and said, listen, we're going to bring this person in or that person. That wasn't the case at all. They've stayed with No, because to be fair, when you look at the, the backroom staff that you do have, it's minimal staff. There's three of you. And what, what else is there? The fitness guy, the physio, the kit man. That's it, really. Mm. I also want to say on record, the older players, him and Conroy especially, I mean, as you say, where he came from, it had been so easy for him to get frustrated, but... No missed a training session, no missed a game. When you bring in the way a, he's acted, both on and off the pitch has been. When you bring in a young team us. that you did, it's important to get a couple of experienced boys, and I think you've you nailed it with 
big brothers. I'd never met a, a new old big brothers played against him, but actually getting to know him, sound big guy, and obviously Conroy. I don't even get a nicer for He's that. He's no Mr. Training Session, no Mr. Really, really good guy. No said a word on you, but. <laughs> I, mean, I think it was what we were talking about earlier. People probably had a stereotype of Slaney. Aye. You know, a stereotype Same with yourself. Stereotype. Aye. Yeah. Like, everybody has that stereotype, and then it's when you get to break the barriers, dun dun. Like, when I first met you and Slaney come got announced, I was like, well, why would I go and work with him? He just slaughtered me yeah, on a podcast. Mm. And you were like, come and meet him, see the person. And then when you get to see that person, you, you go on well with them, do you know what I mean? But even for the next five games, I don't think these players will be defined in the next five no, games. No, of course not. MDX came and watched this season, you'd like to see your samples and that. They're, they've been brilliant, you mm. know what I mean? I, any Simples manager out there Grants. should go and take a wee risk on yeah. them. Uh, I would, I would like, like, uh, A lot of them have done, even you think about that, like we're a brand new team, mate. Yeah. Allo have been together for years. Allo's team have been together for years. Your no. Grahams, your Scoogles, Kev Collies, yep. Sam. Like they've been there for years. We gave them a right good game. Like a team sure that have been put together four. six weeks I think after being five months one. together, fourth in League One. Right. And then a penalty decision. A penalty decision. Right. Thanks very much for that, mate. Losses my job. But even I bet that was, I mean, that night was a real highlight. No, after the game, it was a real, real low, but to actually look at where at the start of the year and when we first came into pre season to where we were then. Fucking hell, and then playing a certain way as well, mate, which isn't it easy for players at that level to do. No, and my fa my my favourite thing was the trip away. Bucky, that was just fucking. <laughs> my overriding feeling will be looking at his face on the bus on the way back, and he, I know he's thinking, what the fuck? Is I was like, what? Like, him doing me, you remember? Oh, that? Brother, you want to come oh, sit there? He's like, because oh, you were sitting naked at that point. <laughs> I was like, nah, I'll stay up here. <laughs> <laughs> you <didn't have> so <laughs> much. Oh, honestly. That was incredible. Then we got a wee bit of blood, the helicopter came out. <laughs> the lot came out in it. Oh, that's enough. Are you going to stick in coaching? Are you going to... Do you know what, mate? My, this, I was, I was, I feel really ha happy now that I, because I always wanted, can I do, because I, I love coaching with like at Bok and that, and I was like, can I do that with adults? And now I, I feel I can, but... I feel probably this season that I've probably just sort of block has been affected a wee bit because I, you know it's like it's no part time it's f f you're full right. on it so I want to go back to to, to that and give that a right a right go for a few years. Right. What, what about you, brothers? Uh, I'll keep playing um, whether I go full time play? again. Nah, he's, mate, he's played the fucking fifty games this year. Well, I uh, go full time or stay part time is a question. Um, no, made my mind up yet. Uh, Would you what? like full time again? Probably missed it, aye, oh, yeah. if I'm being honest. Yeah. And your lifestyle though, and the way you live your life and the way I, your fitness, I know fitness regime is, I think, full time. I find that arcade, I if you're going back full time. No bother. <laughs> I'll be on the door. Hi. I'll walk the door for you. Maybe I get the sofa. We'll talk business there. <laughs> what about coaching, brother? Do you think that's something you're going to stick with? Uh, recently, I used to have taken quite a lot. It's been, it's been good, it's been hard. I'm um, not going to lie, I can see why you turn it him, if mm. I'm being honest, because sometimes when you ask boys and they don't do it, you you get a wee bit frustrated. Uh, but yeah, I, I would like to do coaching, but if an offer come up to just be a player for another year, for, I would just go and be a player, I think, mm. and then see what the coaching on the other side, because as you say, it's, it's hard to do both, yeah. especially having a business on the side as well. It's You've got this, and then the manager 24-7, it's hard, mm. so it is. Um, Even like... Again, this was our decision to bring him in, but surely the boys have learned off of him in terms of if you want to go to the top level, what you need, the work you need to put in to do it, mate. Again, any other part times, I don't think you would get that sort of player guess, that had played that level to learn off of. Nothing something there about, but. <coughs> I mean, Gary Fraser's now doing press ups before the fucking training session. Which, <laughs> I, never, talking about, uh, which I never thought I'd say. With him bringing the weights bag and that, if I was just had a wee thought in my head about the night you brought the weights bag in and stuff. Not in Cookie Booty, didn't he? Cookie Booty broke his tongue. That killed us, that. Oh, fuck my hair. That was when I was in the end of the game. I just thought, but no. I, remember, I, I came in that day after the Spartans came with Cookie Mr. Pelt. I was gutted with that, and then I came in and Cookie's in the, in the shower room. And I'm like, ah, Cookie, it's fine. I've all missed penalties. Like, no, no, it's my fits. <laughs> I think my fits broke. Came in <laughs> and put bag. in a bag, and Brother's weights were in the bag, broke his toe. <laughs> that'll all come up on the documentary well, that'll come up uh, I'm sorry up. I didn't realise that was any, hi any highlights uh, for you just oh, just being with you and the co I think the coach we've had a, a good year mate. I've really enjoyed it dressing room before I, do, you feel like a, do you feel like a no weights off your shoulders but some oh, sort massive, of Kev, massive, some honestly. sort of like you've got normality back definitely honestly Kev see for seven months I never slept maybe two hours a night but see now I'm back to 
actually sleeping it yet, oh, which right. is a fucking big relief. You actually didn't, you didn't sleep nah. at all. But nah. what, what, what I used, used to, to, I used to go down. Like everything. Yeah. What drink was the? I know you've said hangs through this podcast, but what drink was there a main thing that was really, or was it just everything that you're dealing with? Didn't think I would take defeats as bad as I did, mate. Because mm. you took it on you, didn't you? Oh, if fuck. It was your Honestly, mate, I'm talking three or four days that you're fucking questioning everything that you've said, mm-hmm. team you've picked, tactical, what you, how you've been on the side, just over analyse everything. I can mate. see why you're like that because even when you join in at training, you hate getting beat. Mm-hmm. Honestly, <laughs> how, I think I'd how be used to it with a career hood, mate. How angry does he get? Can we just say like the, the old boys won every game? Every game, oh, they? Uh, every game. Just put need to put that out there. So oh, the old was a good standard. I actually started with the old team eight in the first month. It was only when you stopped playing that we started. I mean, beat every week. Yeah. And he's playing with his New Balance on. <laughs> so <laughs> playing another show. Wonder where Chris, wonder where Chris is. Well, you injured your new oh, balance. Italian boy. Wonder where he is. So but, the, do you know, sorry, Kevin, I know you're trying to get that question, but see, Chris, he came in and there was no, <laughs> there was no kit for him. So I'm, and the boys are all out doing what? And the boys come in and say, listen, Chris, he's getting clothes, he's got jeans and, <laughs> jeans and timbies or something. And they're like, ah, but they can't come in and train like that. So I've went, I like him, said, Chris, so I've took my kit off and, and you put his jeans on. I, but I didn't, I, I didn't, I don't wash my kit off. <laughs> <laughs> so, They've been stinking. <laughs> Chris has put my shorts and sluggies on. And, oh. so, and I've seen I said to Chris they're brand new pa, I said I've just the kit match just gave me what the fuck so, so Chris must have been uh, injured Ke- sorry Kev you're desperate to get, uh, this desperate get this last question in. <laughs> it's not last I don't know where you're coming you've obviously that. resurrected his career for 10 minutes will you end his career for 10 minutes before the season goes out it's up, that's up down mate you want to play no I don't I mean come on Paul I think the fans the fans no do you know what he's going to take he's going to take we can finish that bit of the documentary. No, for, to play, I, I found I found it uh, really early on that there was a reason why I came out of it. But I started getting demons again. I started, I did genuinely. I started really struggling with it. Uh, even joining in training. I was getting home feelings like injuries or, and you could probably. But I quit. I, I realised early on that there's a, there was lots of reasons why I came away from football. Um, and then I, I was looking at your boys, how demanding and how fit they were, and I'm like, to, to go and to get to that level and what, what I said for the start this isn't a this isn't a gimmick so I'm not going to bring my pal in just to fucking play so if I wasn't if I wasn't ready to put the same work in as him which at training mate it was tough but that time when you made your debut you were you were clo- you were doing really well that's why you played aye and, and and at that time it was maybe I should have kept going but again I, I, I kept getting I don't know, I was overthinking everything. I thought, I, I would rather these boys play. They've still got their career and step back into the coaching. He was good on the video analysis, wasn't he? Aye, he was. I thought the, the last few weeks you've been very good at coaching, I think, um, stepping up. I, I, I don't think it's a technical thing with you. I think it's more a mental fitness aye. thing. Mm. Aye. Because technically, when you do join in, you're very good. good. It's it's just that thought. When you do a run, you, you think, oh, no, I'm fucked. I'm fucked. But you know, because you can keep going. Just get through it. Aye. aye. Mm-hmm. And I, I and I, I don't do you know what I don't I didn't want to be that sort of player either that he, he is he isn't fit as the rest and you're playing and is it is it like a pals act or for the boys to see that um the, the boys want to see or whatever so I think I was and the big thing for me it was that I wanted the, the boys have got all their career ahead of them so do you know what I mean I was like why am I what am I doing I've had oh, I didn't really have a career but well I did so on 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 this final part of the day. <laughs> Anything we've no cleared up and <laughs> quite happy with how everyone's just been honest, mate. Isn't it? Isn't it? It's just we've just told you yep. the, the truth, facts. Ah, well, we'll go for we'll go Saturday. We've got. Um, can I always say as well for anybody that does want not even just management coaching that night, where you had to do video analysis, then plan out a full session, and then go and set it up all within how hard it is. I said to after him, I like about me. I don't know how you have no been demented this full season doing that. Because see when see when you when you're doing your video analysis right, and then the players are coming up to warm up, your head goes. But I say to him regularly in a training session, I was like, my head's went blank, can you come in and help me here? Because it's just like you're, you're all day you're planning to do video analysis, then when you get there, you're planning the session. Well you're you've planned your session already, but then you're going to go and put it all out. And then you're trying to get your numbers sorted, so you're in the group chat waiting to see who's in. Then there might be And then if somebody pulls it. So what happened was somebody put out and we were left with seventeen or something. So I, I was so I had does brown possession, so I was one of the possessions I had done but it was kind of like you had to have certain amount of numbers so one put out and I'm like him nah you just take care and you just done it right away but that's where as a young coach it is Peter didn't really like even coaching how hard it is even yeah. you, uh-huh. it's just talking to the, a group of people like, on a pitch I can speak to MD but see when you stand in front of them it's so uh, never right. it's tough <laughs> better planning it has to get across the amount of times you come out of your team talking oh, what a load of shit I've just spoke to <laughs> No, it's all right. It's all been filmed. Even that, even the, the documentary side of things, I think that's been quite healthy for Scottish football. Whatever anybody's opinions of it is, 
because in Scottish football we don't sometimes help ourselves. So actually to see the the, the background, how I know a team operates and what managers say, how players react. I know. I just over. think it's um, I think it's been refreshing, and I'm glad that. Um, I'm glad that we had, had a part in this opportunity because it's been an experience. That's what it has Your been. Your distances yourself, yourself last week when the abuse was coming. Ah, you were not taking much to do it. You want no, to no, remain silent. Uh, I'm no part of the open goal. No, I, I, no, I, exactly. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just a fucking fat commentator. I'm <laughs> 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 the chain field once. Big Clive t- Tilsley. I've loved the boys. Ah, the boys have been. The great. boys have been brilliant. My, fi- my three favourites. Why there? No, no, I don't do that. Who do you think's the worst dress? Nice knowing you, lads. <laughs> 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 but no, amazing guys, well done.